All right. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to this 2024 Whitstone Lecture. Sir Charles Whitstone was the first professor of experimental philosophy at King's College London. He worked on transmission of sound waves, electrical signals. He invented the first electric telegraph, Whitstone Bridge, to measure very small electric resistances. He made a musical instrument called Concertino, and he also worked on stereo photography. Today we would call it 3D photography. And in 2013, we established the Whitstone series lecture to, com to commemorate um, Professor Whitstone's contribution to experimental physics and also to celebrate um, our current work in experimental physics in the department. And one of the areas which we are passionate about is the science of light. And today's speakers share this passion with us. Professor Gerard Mourou was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 2018, I believe, mm -hmm. together with Donna Strickland for development of chirp pulse amplification concept. And this concept you can find in any more or less powerful lasers these days. Professor Moreau made a pioneering contribution to ultrafast lasers, to um, ultrafast um, optoelectronics, and he also developed eye surgery with femtosecond lasers. So please welcome Professor Moreau to, to deliver 2024 Whitstone Lecture. I have to go now. Okay. Let's see if you can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry, I, I you know I I I'm going to wear my coat because it's a little bit uh, too cold for me, although you know I am from Savoy from the French help, but I, you know, I, uh, I had a, a little problem this morning when I woke up. So it, it's, um, it's, it's really a, a great honor, you know, to be uh, here with you and to share my passion for, for lasers and, and light and, uh, and I, so, that's the reason why um, my title is like this, Passion for Extreme Light. Not any kind of light, but extreme light. And I will tell you what it is. Uh, also, I really want, I'm very really glad to be, um, uh, to present, you know, my collaborate and also my student, Donna Strickland, you know, with whom I had the Nobel Prize in, um, in 2019, uh, 18, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, okay, I'm going to sh right now. And also, I think this, you, you know that this year also, we had uh, three uh, Nobelists also uh, about lasers and uh, and not any kind of laser but short pulse lasers so very very much in the line of what i'm going to to discuss today i want to really thank armel said uh, for this uh, for these invitations and i have to say that uh, she is one of the most uh, vigorous and uh, person I, <laughs> I happen to know, you know, she's very, very, very good, and she loves this place, I can tell you. So, uh, so anyway, so I'm going to, um, uh, to, um, to talk about, let's see, uh, about lasers, extreme light lasers, and everything started with this gentleman here, okay, you know, Ted Mehman. Okay, Ted Neyman, you know, really demonstrated the laser, the first to demonstrate the laser action, in, in fact, uh, yeah, uh, in, um, 
1916. And it was, in fact, it was a May uh, uh, 1960, 16, uh, and it was, um, uh, it was in the afternoon and so on. It, it was remarkable, uh, you know, how this, uh, he was a young, quite young at that time, you know, he came up with uh, this concept. I mean, the concept, of course, was developed, was invented by towns, but uh, he did it this way, okay? Towns wanted to, thought that really the laser was going to be uh, gas lasers, you know? And uh, it was going to be uh, four level systems. And he came with a new concept shown based on ruby lasers, solid lasers, and also uh, um, a three level system. So he was really uh, an amazing man. And uh, so he invented the laser. The laser, of course, you know, is being, uh, you know, uh, seen as a, 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 a continuous wave of light. OK, in fact, I will show you that it's not always continuous, but it was, it's, it's really, uh, it's for some of us, is based on very short pulses. And uh, first, OK, uh, this very, uh, um, these lasers, we know which, we know what uh, light is wave, especially here, I'm sure in the audience, people know that, that the laser is wave. And, but lasers, CW lasers are so exquisite that this wave now is a coherent, Okay, can be coherent over very, very long distance. Okay, so I showed that uh, can be coherent over distance, which is uh, from the Earth to the, to the Moon. Okay, but so you have, you have, of course, you know, the period of flight. The period of flight is uh, s uh, micrometers, right? And so, you know, you see the number of periods that you have between the Earth and 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 um, and the Moon is of the order of 10 to the 14, you know, periods. During these 10 to the 14 periods, you know, you have no hiccup. It's perfect. Okay. But also, so this is what you can do uh, with what we call CW laser, but also uh, what we can do. We can isolate one single period of light, okay? And, uh, and, and this, this uh, the, the period corresponds to femtoseconds or so. And this is what I'm going to talk about. So uh, we can produce uh, very short pulses in femtosecond regime. In fact, uh, in a single femtosecond regime. And, and um, <clears throat> Agostini and Anouye showed that we could go to attoseconds. And But I will also show that we could go to zeptosecond. Okay. So, uh, so uh, lasers, you know, now as a, I think as a future, in enormous futures. It's not the end of the story, okay? Um, so what, so you have two things. If you want really to use these very, very short pulses, there's two big applications. The first application, you, you want to use these very short pulses, you know, to, to um, make a snapshot of extremely fat, fast events. For instance, Anne Lillier and uh, Agostini and Ferenc Kraus, you know, measured, you know, the, uh, the movement of electrons around, around uh, uh, the nucleus. And, uh, but the other big application is the fact that you can produce enormous, enormous peak power. Why? It's because the power is energy divided by time, okay? So, um, 
so it's E over T. And so if you want to have a, a high peak power, you can either use a lot of energy, you know, or extremely short pulses, OK? And this way, we can really produce now the largest peak power is produced by, by lasers, but also with these extremely short pulses and, and so on, high peak power, you can produce the largest pressures, the largest temper temperature, the largest pressure, the largest, uh, uh, largest pressure, yes, the largest acceleration, as I will show you, and the largest field, of course. So this is a, is a very unique source, you know, of, uh, of energy, particularly in radiation. Okay, now uh, with lasers, with light, you know, uh, what we have been done so far, most of the time, is we have done atomic physics. The physics at the, at the electron volt, EV physics. Okay, but until now, okay, but with this, with this, uh, this uh, type of laser which can really put out petawatt la uh, of peak power and so on, we can really do now, um, we can do subatomic physics. We can do now, um, we can look at not only uh, um, the electrons around the nucleus and so on, but we can really do now, we can now study nuclei, okay? Which is, so that was, uh, of course, extremely, uh, in order, it's not EV physics now, but it's rather um, TEV, GEV, TV physics, and maybe we'll do TV physics. Uh, so, yes, we can produce with, uh, with, with these very short pulses, with one joule, you know, of, of energy produced in one femtoseconds, it's a, it's a petawatt system. A pet, what is a petawatt? A petawatt is basically, is a, if, we, if we consider uh, uh, power plants, gigawatt power plant, which are the kind of unit, you know, for, for uh, power plants, a gigawatt. Well, a petawatt is a million gigawatt, okay? So a million gigawatt uh, power plant, okay? And so this is, this is amazing, it's impressive. And, uh, and so this is a petawatt, and that corresponds roughly to uh, the, the grid, the global grid power of the, of, of the Earth, okay, on the Earth. So it's enormous. And, but of course, we know that light can carry pressures, okay? So uh, we can, uh, we, if we focus now this, this enormous peak power over a very short spot, which is limited by, by the wavelength of light, uh, then you can produce enormous pressure, which is equivalent to millions of Eiffel Tower on, on your finger. So this is uh, amazing. So let's look at, uh, <clears throat> because we are going to, talk, to use power, so I, I've, I'm looking at the in power or intensity. By the way, intensity is power divided by the surface area, okay? So uh, when the laser was sorry, uh, when the laser was invented by Tena, Ted Mayman and the first lasers, uh, the intensity which had been produced was in a, of the order of 10 to the 8 or so watt per square centimeters. Okay, at that time it was enormous. Okay, so we were here, 1960s. Then we came with some techniques, uh, what we call Q-switching and mod locking and so on, and we increased this, this, this power. We went to about, around 10 to the, to, to the 11, 10 to the 12, um, <clears throat> what 
Perth, uh, peak power, what Perth Crossan. Uh, intensity, sorry, intensity here, uh, 10 to the 12 uh, watt per square centimeters. And, but at that time, we couldn't go higher. We couldn't go higher because, um, you know, we were using, we were using uh, amplifiers, and these amplifiers were made of, say, of uh, solids, and or even liquids also. And so what happened, because uh, the intensity uh, over 10 to the 11, 10 to the 12 watt per square centimeters was too high, we, the index of refractions, the index of refraction of, uh, of the material now become, becomes a function of the intensity. So the index of refraction, which is n, which is equal to a constant, uh, plus now there's a new terms, a new terms of N2i, the, the, the index of refraction becomes a function of the intensity. So if you have uh, a beam, that beam that you want to amplify it, which has some, some wiggling, some, some imperfections, which as you know, described here, then these imperfections are going to be augmented, are going to be amplified because you have this term here, and which is called small-scale self-focusing, which means that you are going to have an uh, area of very high intensity. You will have filaments, and these filaments, you know, really are going to be uh, uh, bad for the material. You are going to to basically burn your uh, or damage your uh, elements in your lasers. So that was a, that was the problems. The, why we could not really go higher than 10 to the 12 or so 10 to the 14. Uh, uh, intent, um. So, uh, because of this filament, so we we came up with the concept of amplifications, and that really changed so all lasers. Uh, is because now what we wanted to do is we wanted to really to amplify the pulse. But by decreasing the intensity, so we could amplify energy and 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 really keep the intensity, which is was going to be amplified at a low level. And so the way we were doing that was <coughs> was that if you had a short pulse, a short pulse, and that we want to amplify. Then the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to stretch it. By stretching the pulse, then by amplifying, you know, you are going to decrease the intensity. And you will be able really to amplify the pulse without damaging, you know, this optical element. And this is, we are, we are using a pair of gratings, you know, um, uh, and because the grating pairs like that, you see that the grating, you see that you, the different colors are taking different paths, okay? So you can uh, organize your grating, arrange your grating pairs in a way that uh, the red can go, can cover more distance than the blue or the converse. And, and so we were able to stretch the pulse, okay? Stretch the pulse without changing his spectrum. So this is very, very important, of course. Um, so we take this, uh, this very short, this pulse of, uh, in a picosecond of that time during the, this work with Donna, we had uh, uh, picosecond pulses, a picosecond 
is a father and a femtosecond. second. It's, it's about um, <coughs> or 100 or so optical cycle. Okay? And then it, it, they are going to be stretched. Okay? And so, so the intensity will be small. And we will then be capable of amplifying the pulse without you know, uh, uh, damaging this amplifier. And then when we, uh, when we come uh, now, what we have to do is we want to try to compress the pulse, OK? Because, uh, and, and we do that with uh, also a similar uh, uh, grading, but it's the, the, the grading are uh, arranged you know, in the different ways. And this time is, uh, and you can do that, you can show that. Uh, you can use the gratings now to compress the pulse exactly, and bec because they are, in fact, um, uh, they are conjugate of one another. This type of gratings so is conjugated of this one. I'm not showing you that, but uh, believe me. And uh, and then what you can do, you can exactly compress the pulse. You know exactly the way uh, uh, the pulse will have the same structures, the same spectrums, and the same structure basically than uh, the initial pulse. But it will have it will be a million times more powerful. Okay, and that is of course that is the concept of CPA that changed everything. Uh, so now. We have, we will be able really to uh, go over these this, uh, problems of, uh, we are not going to be limited now in intensity, okay? We'll be able really to go higher. And higher now, you are going to find all these new applications, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and we will, so I'm going to describe. Uh, qu rapidly, the first one will be at second physics. Well, this is what what uh, Agostini and and uh, and Anulier and uh, you know um, Ferenc Krauss demonstrated. Okay, I, I'm go not going to talk about that, but I want to go higher first. And so we can do what we call uh, relativistic optics because the field. The field now uh, of this, in, uh, when we amplify the pulse, you know, after, after CPA, uh, when we amplify the pulse, we, now the field, laser field, you know, is very large. So the oscillations of the electrons, which is trapped in this laser field, this is the way light works, and uh, now, um, uh, for the, uh, the laser field will be enormous. So the electron now will have a quiver velocity, the quiver velocity, which is going to be uh, higher than, uh, uh, you know, uh, going to be in a relativistic regime. So the mass, so the, the quiver uh, energy, which is m, m not c squared, so M naught here now is not going to be the mass of the electron at rest, but it's going to be the mass, the relativistic mass of the electrons. Okay? We will have to take into account the Lorentz factor. And the Lorentz factor in these regimes you know, is enormous, a thousand times. So, and then when we uh, are, uh, we are um, in, in, in the yellow band, what uh, we will, we will be able now to, to do the same thing, not with the electrons, but with the ions and the protons in particular, you know. And uh, so, uh, so now we will have, we'll be able really to accelerate. So we'll show you the proton as well. And, and then we, what, of course, what we want to do, again, we want to go even higher and higher 
what you can, what you have, what you, when you are in a regime of 10 to the 29 or so, what per square centimeters. Now, what happened is you are boiling the vacuum, okay? Now you are going to break down the vacuums in this um, uh, element. And uh, so this, of course, is something very exciting. And uh, this is, this, when this, this is a type of intensity that you need is called Schwinger, the Schwinger intensity. So we will be able really to break down the vacuum, okay? And to materialize, in fact, the vacuums and, um, and the light as well. And so, uh, so this is uh, also uh, an area, of course, that we are extremely exciting, which is extremely ex exciting. And we, but, and we, in order to get, uh, to go to this intensity, what we will have to do, of course, is to compress the pulse even more, okay? Always, in order to get peak power, you have two, two ways. Either you try to use more energy, but energy is expensive, okay, and also it takes a lot of space, or you can sh sh uh, shorten the pulse, okay, and uh, to, to this limit. And the limit, of course, of the pulse is to go into the single cycle limits, and, um, and, and I will show you how we can do that. Uh, okay, now, uh, and so immediately in order to, uh, uh, we, you know, in, in the, so this was in the, um, was, I was when we, with Marcel, my wife, we came back to France in 2005, and, and at that time, you know, the European community decided really to diversify their, their um, infrastructures. They wanted to build new type of infrastructures. So, uh, I, yeah, obviously I proposed to build an infrastructure based on petawatt laser, based on CPA petawatt laser, to produce this very, very high intensity so we could go and we could really uh, perform all the... Uh, 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 these visions that we could really uh, uh, obtain with, by going higher and higher in intensities. And the three, inf so these infra infra infrastructures are called the ELI infrastructures, extreme light infrastructure. And so we built three, one in Czech Republic, one in Hungary, one in Romania. Okay, and there are two, there are three infrastructure now, which are providing pulses which are at a petawatt level, and the goal of this infrastructure is basically trying to uh, uh, um, go, demonstrate what we on uh, uh, what we wanted to do on our roadmap. Okay, they call that the Muru roadmap. You know. Um, good. Uh, so this is what we want to do uh, with the uh, ELI infrastructures. Now, in order to do the compression, because remember, uh, we have to compress the pulse, okay? And so uh, what we can do is uh, we, are, we, can this, we can compress the pulse, I'm going to show you. Uh, how, so you are Talking, you're taking a pulse from an oscillator. The oscillator is typically 20 femtoseconds, 20 femtoseconds. This is about uh, um, 20 optical cycles, no, 15 optical cycles. An optical cycle is about 2 femtoseconds, uh, so 10, 20 femtoseconds. So, so in order to, to compress the pulse, first we have to isolate you know, a single cycle. And so we will do in two, uh, in two, time, in, uh, two steps, I will show you. Uh, the first step is really to use once again 
the fact that the index of refraction is a function of the intensity, okay? But this time, we are, instead of working in a space domain, we are, we are going to work in the time domain. The intensity now is not, uh, is the function varies in times, because the intensity in few uh, femtoseconds, of course, vary enormously, okay? Uh, and, and because it varies, uh, you are going to change uh, the spectrum of light, okay? So I don't have the time to, to go into the details, but basically, uh, in order to do that, uh, we are, you, you know, uh, trying to compress the pulse using the fact that we are changing the index of refractions uh, of the pulse itself as the pulse goes up and down. The index of refraction is changing. So this is, is changing its spectrums, okay? And because it's broadening the, the spectrum of the light, and because it broadens uh, the spectrum, you have the potential, if you can compress it, to compress the pulse, okay? Because uh, this, is, uh, this is Maxwell's equations. You have, you have done that. Okay, Maxwell is from here, but it's from, if you want really to get uh, a short pulse, you are, you, if you want to have a short pulse, you need a broad spectrum, okay? So this is what you can do with the fact that the index of refraction is a function of the intensity now. And uh, so we, when we, we, used this, this, uh, we use this technique, trying to broaden the spectrums with, uh, by changing the index of refractions, um, with fibers, okay? It, when we were in a, in a millijoule regime, not I mean, in a microjoule regime, uh, we were using optical fibers. You take optical fibers and, and pipe the pulse into the optical fibers, and the pulse is going to propagate. As it propagates over, over a long length, uh, so the, 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 the uh, the optical, uh, uh, the, the uh, you are, bien sûr, the, 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 the length of the fiber is going to, to increase proportionally to the intensity. And so during a, a short time, uh, so it's a little bit like a Doppler effect, okay? And then you are going to produce, uh, you are going to, I'm not going to be much in detail. You are going to, bro to broaden your pulse this way. Okay, and so that, we could do that uh, with the oscillators and so on. And this is the way that we were using be before to get into uh, the femtosecond regime. And now, um, um, we, what we want really to do that, we would like really to go to do that with higher energy pulses. Not limited in not limited in the microjoules, but uh, in we want to try to go in more more uh, energy. So uh, f the first step was uh, was really demonstrated by Svelto's group and Krauss and so on, and where they were using capillaries because you couldn't really use fiber. You were going to burn the fiber, and with capillaries you could compress pulse. This in a, um, uh, at the millijoule level, okay, but by using because capillaries, you know, is this capillaries is is you have gas, you have so you, you you have more you can accommodate more energy. So but so use the capillaries, and uh, and then you could really uh, uh, well capillary field of noble gas, okay? And so you could really uh, do exactly the same thing that you were doing with fibers, but you, were, you could accommodate more, uh, more, more light. So you could accommodate up to the millijoules, 
And, but we wanted to, to, do more, to have more than the mini joules. So we use what we call after a, 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 a thin film compression. We use um, yes, we use plates, thin plates. And what, because as we were really increasing the energy, when you increase the energy, you are changing the, the flat, the, your, uh, the special um, property of your, um, of, of your uh, beam, laser beam. The laser beam, as you increase the energy, becomes flat top, flat top, okay? And because it's flat top, then you could, re you, you could use uh, thin plates, uh, and and you could in this way you could pro you could really produce a cell phase modulations, okay, uh, your cell phase modulation that you need to broaden the spectrums over uh, the whole area, okay, without damaging, uh, making a damage, okay, uh, and so uh, this is. Uh, so I want to ready to, to go fast here. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, yes, yeah, so uh, basically uh, what, you know, it's this are for the people which are in optics, laser optics and so on. I, I go into the details. So we have the short pulse, you know, provided by the lasers. And then we can go into uh, the thin films now. And because the thin film, which has a flat top, and the pulse has a flat top, OK? And then uh, we could produce cell phase modulations. Uh, that is, we could broaden locally the spectrums over uh, uniformly over the, the, the beam. And then we could compress uh, the pulse, but we could compress now the pulse, you know, uh, uh, the flat top pulse. Okay. And anyway, and but this, of course, uh, we have the surface modulation now um, will broaden the, the, the spectrums. So we can, if we can compress now, we will have, we will have more energy. You know, uh, on a short in a short pause. Okay, so we do that, but not in a single step, but in a two steps. Okay, and so we could now produce. Uh, we can go to about uh, 25 femtosecond into the uh, single uh, into the few optical cycle uh, regime. So this was uh, here. We see. Uh, uh, this is a pulse, you know, before it is, it is compressed, and this is the pulse after it's compressed, okay? So you compress the pulse without changing the energy of the pulse, so you, if, of course, um, get more uh, peak power. And uh, so now, um, so we take the pulse at 20 femtosecond, we put it at two femtosecond or a few femtoseconds, but that is not enough for, for us. We would like to go to much, much uh, shorter pulse in atosecond, zeptosecond regime. I'm going to show you how we can do that. Uh, so, in, so we can get extremely high peak power. Remember that the goal that we have is to get these extremely high intensities and by compressing the pulse. Because with, if we do that with the energy, uh, it's too expensive. The laser, uh, um, the laser would be too, too big and too expensive. So the way we're now going to get after this first step where we compress the pulse, you know, by cell phase modulations. Now we are going to use another technique to compress the pulse from the, uh, from the uh, single femtosecond regime 
into the actosegond, the zeptosegond regime. And this is the way it works. Um, it works. So here you have what we have. We have our single cycle pulse that we have to we have produced by using um, our uh, cell phase modulation technique, single cycle. And now we are going to hit this uh, this specimen, a specimen you know which made its atoms. So you have ions. Well, you have ions of. Um, uh, donc ion positive and you have electron negative uh, uh, elements okay so this pulse comes and of course the pulse is very high in intensity the pressure light pressure is enormous okay and it comes to this uh, this this specimen here and is going now because the pressure is enormous is going to push the electron forward and, and, and leave the, the protons backward, OK? So we are going to separate the electrons and the protons, OK? And, and cr create enormous field, you know? And um, uh, so this is what happened here. You see, we have this pulse coming, acting on the uh, prot uh, electrons, separating the electrons and the protons. And we are going to produce an enormous electric field. And this enormous electric field now is, is taking these electrons moving forward. So it's like you, this electron forms, if you want, a mirror. Okay. And is, is this, this, uh, this mirror now is going to reflect the beam. But this mirror is a mirror which is going, is, will be capable to move at the speed of light. OK? Now, you see, if you look yourself in a mirror, and the mirror moves at the speed of light toward you, what happened? Well, what happened in this case is the, the fact that this, um, uh, this the pulse, the electron, the the, uh, the pulse of electrons which are sitting in the back, are going to be compressed. Okay, going to be compressed. You see. So here we have the laser cam. It push the electron first, you know, in these directions left the uh, ion behind, and then the, the uh, DC field that you have produced now is taking these electrons and bringing them back. And this, you know, the, the electrons which are forming, which are reflecting the light, is now going to, is moving at the speed of light. And you can show that this, in fact, the pulse is going to be compressed. It's going to be compressed by the Lorentz factor, you know, of your electrons here. So uh, I'm going faster now. It's going to be compressed. Yeah, there's a very simple relation of 600 atosecond over the intensity of your, your pulse. And so this way, you can, you can, you can demonstrate but now you can produce pulses which are compressed by a thousand times. So remember, we were when um, with the first the first um, compression that we did, we went to uh, the single cycle, uh, femtoseconds, right? Now, if we compress that by a factor thousand, you are getting. A, a, a zeptosecond, a zeptosecond, so 10 minus 21. So if you do that, when you have a zeptosecond, a zeptosecond, uh, so you, have, you can produce, you, you could produce, because we haven't done quite that, uh, one joule in a zeptosecond. Zeptosecond is 10 minus 21 seconds. It is the period of gamma ray. 
oscillations. Okay. So, and the zeptosecond, one joule is a zeptosecond, of course, it's a zeta watt. Okay. Now, if you take a, a, a zeptosecond, as I said, 10 minus 20, uh, 20 is, is a period of gamma rays. Okay. So you, have, you are producing a MEV coherent gamma ray. This is phenomenal. Okay. And uh, now, <coughs> uh, what you will see, but uh, we will go in a minute and we'll see what we can do with uh, a, a, a gamma ray of, a, you know, a gamma ray in these regimes, okay, with a lot of energy and so on. So it's, um, this is very, very, of course, is, if we can demonstrate that, it's going to be, you know, uh, enormous, okay. Um, so <clears throat> the other things also, so if, remember that we are going to use the gamma ray for other applications. I'm going to show you the ap applications. But here we have uh, now, okay, if you have this zeta watt, and if you put this zeta watt and you focus this zeta watt on a diffraction limited light, and remember that we are in a gamma ray regime, so the wavelength of light is extremely small, okay? So if you put this, this zeta watt, uh, uh, zeta watt, so zeta watt uh, pulse onto this very small spot size, we can really easy, easily go into 10 to the 21, 20, 10 to the 29 watt per square centimeter, which means you are at a Schwinger intensity. That means you can break down the vacuum. Okay. So this is, um, of course, you, because you can really turn now light into matter. Okay. So this is very, very, of course, very exciting. Now, you have uh, many applications. One of the applications, another applications, is the, is the application of accelerations. Um, Toshita Jima, my good friend Toshita Jima, showed that you could accelerate light uh, accelerate uh, electrons or particles with light, okay? And uh, so this is what I'm going to show you, and then we will see that we, what we can do with this visible and what we can do that with the x-rays, you know, fantastic applications. So, um, <clears throat> so in the visible, if you are taking uh, this short pulse, and so this is something which is being done now by many, many labs, okay? Take a short pulse, okay? We can focus a pulse into a gas jet, and if you do that, you are going to ionize the gas jet, you are, and so you are going to uh, make a plasma wave, okay? And this plasma wave, you know, which is here, uh, uh, it's very much like, uh, you know, uh, the wave that you can see in, uh, in um, uh, when you're going, when you're uh, <coughs> uh, uh, on the sea. Uh, the, this plasma wave, you are going to have, uh, it's going to accelerate electrons very much like, uh, you know, uh, when we swim, you know, uh, the wave is going to carry you out at a certain speed. But here, the uh, electrons are going to be uh, <coughs> really uh, uh, taken by the, the electron is going to be uh, uh, drained, you know, and uh, will drive this, uh, will be driven uh, at the speed of light so you have these electrons which are trapped by the plasma wave, and the plasma waves are going to carry uh, this electron at a wave speed of the, uh, in, the in, in, in this case, of the speed of light, okay? Because it is a light 
which is making this plasma wave. So, and, and what is phenomenal about this acceleration technique is that you can get extremely efficient accelerations of the order of GeV per centimeters, giga electron volt per centimeters. Okay, this is enormous. Uh, for instance, if you take uh, um, <coughs> CERN, CERN is LHC, light, uh, LED, um, uh, electron accelerator, you know, um, and which is now, sorry, uh, um, LHC, you know, um, yeah. So it's uh, these accelerators, you know, which is, is, is made for, to accelerate hadrons, so hadron colliders, okay large hadron colliders, um, <clears throat> you, know, uh, uh, you know, accelerate uh, particles to energy of the TeV, okay? Uh, and the TeV is because tera electron volt, you know, it takes to accelerate particles to this, to the, to the TeV regime, it, it <clears throat> It takes uh, enormous accelerators, which is a big um, uh, circular accelerators uh, of 27 kilometers of circumference. 27 kilometers of circumference to go to the TEV, okay? Um, and the reason is because, of course, we are using, for acceleration, we are using uh, <coughs> We are, we are using uh, um, frequency which are in a gigahertz regime, okay? And uh, so it will take 27, the gradients that we can produce is not very large. It's very large for, but it's, it's not what we are going to get. So 27, very, uh, the gradients are in a uh, mega, uh, sorry, um, um, MeV uh, per per um, uh, per meters, okay. So it will take sub 27 kilometers, okay. Now, because you are using microwave, now if you are using a light, like laser, like uh, uh, with a laser wake field acceleration, like uh, Toshi Tajima techniques, then you you are using light now, but be because you, light is uh, the frequency of light that we are using is 10 to the 14th. So it's much better than 10 to the 9, the conventional microwave, it's 10 to the 9, okay? So, um, so, so, so you see, and now you can do that, you will do, be able to do that over, over about 100 meters in, in, in a, a system would be in the regime of 100 meters to get into the TEV. Now, if you are using, of course, like I, I showed that we could produce uh, X-rays, then with X-rays, uh, the, the large hadron collider will just be about centimeters in dimensions. So you see that it's prodigious, prodigious, because we could make, uh, we could really accelerate particles, you know, to TEV, not now, the next, next uh, LHC will be 100 kilometer circumference. Uh, and by using this technique, we could have, you know, over, we could produce that over tens of centimeters. So, of course, this is, is not being done yet. You know, we have to do it. And uh, we are not going to change the plans because all the plans for the 100 kilometers uh, systems is being drawn out and uh, uh, <coughs> so uh, so but this is just to, to just to show you the potential of what we could do now the futures um, so uh, the other exciting things is that we have these very very short pulse with very high intensities and this very very high intensity in fact um, but we have demonstrated, 
uh, we, we can now produce, um, if we are using a specimen, if we are using the laser with this very high intensity, as I just demonstrated, um, we could produce protons. Protons, you know, in... Uh, because these very high intensities, you know, are in a can be in a single cycle regime, okay? And you can show that we could produce GeV protons, okay? That means relativistic protons. And <clears throat> so this is, uh, this really uh, makes, makes possible, you know, a new kind of uh, applications. I'm going to show you that. So single cycle, you know, you can uh, produce now GeV uh, protons, okay, uh, by using this, and uh, over very compact, com compact systems, you know, centimeter size systems, okay. Now, if you want really to produce GeV protons, it it, it, it takes you. Um, accelerators, which has this size, about uh, almost a kilometer in length, okay? And will cost you a lot of money, of course. So this is just to show you what we can really do with laser now. It's a little bit, you know, of course, uh, the, the far end of what we can do, but it's, it's, it's on the paper, it's possible. And so, so now, of course, if you are able really to produce particles in this very high energy regime, then you can do, you can do a cosmology in a lab, okay, roughly. We know that if you want to, if you could imitate, imitate the cosmos, okay, uh, and, and right now, I mean, you have the spectrums of uh, cosmic rays, you know, and you have uh, you could really uh, do what is on is now. I mean, the only way, for instance, to produce particles, uh, we don't have no way to produce particles now over uh, 10 to 13 or so uh, EV, you know, uh, on Earth, okay? With conventional technique, we have to use. Uh, of course, uh, the particles coming from the sky, okay? But now if you can really uh, do that, you know, is you, you of course, uh, you put the cosmology, you know, in your lab, or you can do cosmology in the lab. And this, of course, is very, very exciting. Uh, here is an example where we could really do, for, we could study for in Lorentz invariance, okay? That is, we could look at the dispersions of uh, gamma ray, maybe, uh, in vacuum, okay? Now, now it's being done, of course, uh, with very, very large telescopes and so on. Uh, we, could, we could do that, you know, now, uh, because the gamma ray that we can produce, you know, is extremely short, okay? So we can measure things now, uh, the dispersions produced by Lorentz, enfin, the Lorentz invariance can be studied if we look at the dispersion of, of gamma ray burst, you know, over very short distance because the pulses are in a Z2 second regime, okay? So uh, the distances that we can, uh, we, that we could use uh, to, we, it will take only, uh, uh, um, we could, it will take only, um, only dimensions of a kilometer or so to see, to, to, de to study, you know, uh, Lorentz invariance. Uh, the other thing also is we could really have, uh, we could simulate black holes, okay? Uh, we know that uh, the concept of, uh, the principle, uh, the equivalence principle, you know, Einstein equivalence principle, which says that, for instance, 
there is no experiment that will dis discern the difference between the, the effect of gravity and the effect of accelerations, okay? Um, so, because, we, you know, if you take a laser 10 to the 22 watt per square centimeter, and you accelerate uh, the particles, you know, and so uh, to, um, to gammas, to very, very large gamma uh, factors. But you do that, what is ph phenomenal, you do that in a very short time, in a femtosecond, with attosecond time domain. And so this corresponds to enormous accelerations going to the speed of light, you know, in uh, zeptosecond or in femtosecond, you know, is of course uh, the acceleration are enormous. So, and you can demonstrate that you could do acceleration, uh, you could really uh, uh, produce uh, accelerations which correspond to gravity of 10,000 uh, suns, okay? These kind of things, okay? This is very, very, also very uh, uh, ex exciting and also very possible, okay? Because we know that we can accelerate particles already, you know, to the speed of light in a very small fraction of a femtosecond. And uh, finally, you know, I won't try to, de to talk about, uh, but of course we can produce this, this, this particle, you know, these protons and so on, you know, in the laboratories. And so, and you know that protons are very used in medicine, okay, for proton therapies. And also uh, uh, we can uh, really make, um, Implants, you know, we, we can do, we can use, rad, we can make radionuclides, but we can use, you know, for, for, uh, to, to, uh, for cancer. Uh, and also nuclear diagnostics. So there's a lot of application. We can, we can use these, um, these, um, these radionuclides, but we can produce with the lasers. Uh, this is very, very exciting. And uh, now um, the other things that I showed you that we can produce neutrons, okay? If you can do, you can produce neutrons, now it means that you can, we can produce fissions, okay, with the lasers, okay? And uh, for instance, I just want to recall, uh, scan a few things here. Uh, I'm, you know, of course, we have uraniums, we have the thoriums, you know, are the two elements that we can use to produce energy. Uh, and uh, just want to give you an idea of, so if you take a, a gigawatt power plant, for instance, a gigawatt power plant, uh, you know, needs, if you want really to feed, the, to obtain that with using cold, you need, you know, um, 100 trains of 100 wagons, okay, to provide. You need tw 3 million tons of coal, okay? And uh, so this is to, to feed this uh, power plant of a gigawatt uh, power plant. But you, of course, if you are using, uh, uh, if you are using, uh, um, so now if you're using uranium and instead of coal, it will take only 300 tons. And if you're using thorium, you know, it will take only one ton, okay, to do the same, the same job. Um, and uh, so if you, the, here, um, of course, when you are doing fission, okay, you are, you are, uh, banging the uh, uh, the combust uh, the the uh, uh, the com com combustible I mean the, the um, elements uranium or thoriums with neutrons okay so you are 
you're of course uh, producing efficiency, and in the process you are producing energy, and also neutrons. But neutrons are going to be used, you know, to uh, uh, as an, in an avalanche process to produce energy. But also the problem is if you are using neutrons, uh, and you, we do uh, from time to time, you know, the neutrons. Uh, fission, as I said, fission the, com the combustible, but also sometimes it is trapped, you know, by the nucleus, the nucleus of your, of your, of your elements. And this, it means that you are producing uh, now actinic minerals, uh, actinic minor, uh, minor actinides, and this is uh, very uh, bad stuff, which has the lifetimes of the, the waste, which has a very long lived lifetimes of um, uh, sometimes 100,000 years or so. Uh, and so, what you want is you want to get rid of this waste. And this, uh, um, you can use also the neutrons that you can produce by, with a laser to transmute this waste. So, for instance, if I take a waste of, uh, uh, <coughs> if you are producing uh, uh, neptunium, for instance, waste, as you are producing energy, produce neptunium, it has a 2.1 million years lifetime, okay? And uh, so what you want to do now is to, by using the neutrons that you are producing uh, with the laser now, to break this, to fission this, this uh, material. And so we can produce, you know, elements which are uh, much, uh, which, which lifetimes are much less. It's, uh, we go from a million years to minutes. Okay, so it's very, very efficient. And so that's the type of things that you would like right, to do, okay? And, it's the type of things where you will need, here again, lasers. Uh, but, of course, the laser that we are going to use, you want a laser, a special kind of laser, because the laser has to be very efficient. Well, you know that lasers, big lasers, are not efficient. You know, they are in a, a fraction of a percent efficiency. So we have to come up with a new type of laser. And this is what I propose was a, a fiber lasers. Because fibers are very, it's a laser also, but very efficient, okay? Uh, efficient, you know, like 30%, uh, 40%, 50%, something. But efficient compared to a, a fraction of a percent, okay? So you can use a laser really uh, based on fibers. So it, in fact, the architecture of this laser is like a, 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 a bunch of, um, uh, a bundle of, files, of fibers. Of course, these fibers are all phased, okay? So if you have 100,000 fiber phased, they will, comp they will behave like one, okay? But this time, you need one laser with very high efficiency. And so you can do uh, you know, uh, you can do applications which are really using a lot of energy, like transmutations. So that is, this is what uh, uh, this uh, uh, new type of laser will look like. You know, where you have, you start with one fiber and you split one fiber and you divide it up. And finally, uh, you have all these fibers, but you can maintain the phase between the fibers, you know. And if you do that, well, uh, then you will have a, uh, a, a laser system with the efficiency of the fibers, and, but the energy and the average power of what you would like. Uh, now, uh, this very, there is very fast, and that's going to be my last application, that's why I stop. Uh, but it's, of course, we know that there's a lot of uh, uh, debris which has been produced 
uh, since 1957, since the first Putnik uh, was sent, we know that we have produced millions and millions of debris. These debris move at uh, 50 times the speed of light, okay? So they can really be very, very, there are you know, problems, okay? Problems for the equipment, a problem for the cosmonaut as well. So uh, we can also use now, um, we can use uh, this new type of lasers, you know, really to track the debris and destroy the debris. And uh, right now there's about four Eiffel Tower. Four Eiffel Tower was, has been sent since the beginning of uh, the, the space age. And now it takes, you have about half, half an Eiffel Tower, which is under the, in, in the form of debris and which is moving at the speed of light, not, not at the speed of light, but tens uh, kilometers per, uh, uh, I mean, at speed of sound now, sorry. Um, so, uh, and uh, so, but with the laser, we can, we can, we can destroy this, these debris and uh, get rid of them. So we could, there's a potential also now ready to destroy this, uh, these debris. That's very, very important. Well, you know, uh, I, I show these slides because when you have, um, when you are, uh, when you have Nobel Prize, you know, you, you are invited by a lot of people, okay? <laughs> and one of them was, was you guess, who is that, okay? So here we are with the Pope, Francis, and uh, Donna and myself. And, and so what you do uh, when you are invited to the Pope, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> and of course, uh, for us, it was easy to talk. We talk about what I just told you, okay? I told you that, I mean, we, what we could do with very short pulse lasers, you know, high intensity lasers. And, uh, and he, he, he loved it, of course. <laughs> Uh, so this is my conclusions. Extreme light is capable of generating the largest field, largest acceleration, largest temperature, largest pressure, and I think it carries the best hope and opportunities for the future of science and society. This is the motto of Nobel. Thank you very much.